Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of Lunch Table Takes. Um, I'm your host, Evan. Today, I'm joined with Zach. And today, we'll be talking about two of the divisional games that happened this past week. All right, let's get to the Bengals, shall we? We shall. So they had big, big win against the Buffalo Bills in a pretty dominating fashion, I would say. Um, beating the Bills 20, what was it, 27 to 10. 27 to 10. In Buffalo, in the snow. Zach, what are your thoughts on that game? I think that that game was honestly um, like worse than what the score showed. I think the Bengals had their number from the first snap to the last snap. I don't, I don't think that was a close game. Like, I mean, and I know that they still won by 17 points. That's a, that's a three, a three score game still, but I, I really feel like it was just pretty much all around domination from the Bengals from the start to finish in that game. I think Joe, Joe Burrow, I think played the best game that he has ever played in the playoffs. Um, 23 for 36 for 242 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. I think he added a rushing touchdown too, mm-hmm. if I'm correct. So uh, I think he did. I don't know. Either way, that's still – I yeah. mean, I think that Joe Burrow played the best game um, that he has ever played in the playoffs. And I think that kind of kind of silenced um, some of the – some of the haters like on Joe Burrow saying like the only reason the Bengals were in the Super Bowl last year was because of luck or because their defense won every single game for them. Um, and I, I think that that kind of just gave those critics the finger. Um, Joe Burrow playing that good of a game. I mean, I think I think the Bengals in this game – like you could probably make an argument that they looked like the best team in the NFL in that game. Cause I mean, you have the Eagles dominating the giants at 38 to seven and that that's egregious, but it's the giants. Mm -hmm. You have the Bengals dominating the bills by three scores. Um, The chiefs barely squeaking past the Jags. Now the Jags are legit. Okay. The Jags are a good football team, but um the bills are a good football team too. And it was domination from start to finish. So, I mean, I think, I think the Bengals showed that they are legit. I don't think that um, people still saying that they're underdogs or, or still just giving excuses and hating on them. Those people don't have an argument anymore. I think the Bengals came out and stomped on the bills, smacked them from start to finish in Buffalo, in the snow. Um, Joe Burrow played out of his mind defense, Stepped up. It was great team football from everybody. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's really kind of what my thoughts are. Yeah, I mean, I think, like you said, I think there was a great team game from start to finish. I mean, those first two drives, I, I, I don't think there was a negative play. Like, I, I we just, they just went down the field, like, at ease, it felt, and just yeah. scored at will. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I think other than Joe Burrow, I think the biggest player of this game was Joe Mixon. I think Joe Mixon. Oh yeah, a Joe Mixon had a day. Mm-hmm. I think, I think that's that's playoff football right there. It's just hard nosed running, and I think yeah. that's exactly what the Bengals did. And Mixon had yeah. twenty carries for one hundred and five I mean, yards. I mean, to their down. offensive line too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, because yeah, everybody was fight. saying, and I mean, personally, I thought too. I with with the Bengals having three starters out on this offensive line. I mean, they are streaming linemen. I mean, this. I mean, now I I will say that I think their their current makeshift O line is still better than the O line that they went into the playoffs with last year, um, but it's not good. They don't have a good offensive line right now, um, and they just dominated the trenches on both sides of the ball. So, I mean, that was – shout out to the O-line on that team. I mean, I was I was really impressed with that performance. Yeah, I was too. I was not – I thought there was no chance that they played that well, but they played 
as best as I've seen those those three new guys play. Like Jackson Carmen oh, yeah. played really well. Adenishe mm-hmm. played very well. Like they they did pretty they did solid. I mean, I know the Bills don't have like a ridiculous pass rush or anything, but still, I mean, this is the bet like this other than the five touchdown game, I think this is the best game that Mixon's played all year. And so yeah, and I feel like I feel like you have to credit the um the offensive line for that for sure. And like one of the plays that that I think of was I think it was either a power play or some sort of toss or the run play to the left and Adenije was pulling from the other um tackle spot, I believe, and he just pancaked uh-huh. the guy. We had um, Wilcox, yeah. our tight end, kind of come in, and like the hole was wide open, and I, and it yeah. was just like perfectly sealed, and that was something that I'm not accustomed to seeing with those guys. And also, um, there was a couple where like Jackson Carmen would, yeah. would kind of back up a little bit and not like engage immediately, and then he would like it would he would let <clears throat> leave time for him to kind of push and then get a second one in there, but I think. As great as the line played, I think the biggest difference from last year's offense to this year's offense is Joe Burrow is getting the ball out much faster. I think, yeah, for I sure. think that is helping. That's helping the line tremendously because he's getting the ball out second fastest in the NFL, only behind Tom Brady. I'm not entirely sure what the yeah, I think he's, I think is, he's averaging. Just, he's averaging getting the ball out like two seconds, I think. Yeah, something crazy like that. So I think it's that's. Around there. Yeah, that's huge for what they want to do, and so I think, um, I think that I think the they showed, like you said, they are they might be the most complete team in the NFL from top to bottom. I mean, I wholeheartedly believe that they can beat anybody they play. The way that they've been playing, ten game winning streak. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they've been playing lights out football for these last ten games, and I think. Mm-hmm. Like we talked about it, dominant on offense. Joe Burrow played the best game that he's played in the playoffs. Jamar Chase did Jamar Chase things, absolutely electric. Um, mm-hmm. And then you have obviously Mixon had a big game, but the defense, man, the defense absolutely locked up. <laughs> Stephon Diggs, who was arguably one of the, he was going on a tear this year. He was a non-factor. He was a top five receiver in the NFL. Top five receiver exactly. in the NFL held the forty yards. Four on catches, like two, thirty-five on like three yards. Catches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, other than the, that, the Bengals' um, defense is a force. Like they, they oh, yeah. might have the best defense in the NFL. They have I mean, one of the best. I mean, the I know the Eagles' defense is crazy. The Niners' defense is crazy. The Bengals are right up there with them because, like, agree. with with Lou Anarumo and his ability to just completely take away, like players that have no business being taken away like holding Patrick Mahomes in the second half to like what like a hundred yards and like no touchdowns or something like and holding the bills to to 10 points this game Josh Allen is uncomfortable every time he's back there to throw the ball they're they're superstar wide out top five in the NFL gets like three catches like this defense is an absolute force. And I, I agree with what you said. I wholeheartedly believe that the Bengals might be the best football team from top to bottom, and they can beat anybody they play. And yeah. the defense the defense leads the way with that, I think. Because de- defense wins football games. And, and the Bengals' defense, I, I've said this before, and I'll say it again, that no matter what the circumstance is, it doesn't matter if their defense has been getting railed all game. You know they're going to step up. Like when when the moment's brightest and you need it the most, they're going to step up and get that. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I I mean like what you said. I feel like every time Josh Allen dropped back, he was pressured in some way, whether that was being sacked, hurried, or like kind of fending off tackles. Like there was at least one person getting into the backfield. It seemed like in every play. Now yeah. they went ways to wrap up. There were plenty of times where we'd have a guy and Josh Allen being being Josh Allen would 
kind of get out of it. But like, I think that was obviously a big thing. And like you said, like Lou Anarumu is one of the, I think he's one of the best defensive coordinators in the league. And I wouldn't be shocked if in the next couple of years, he gets some head coaching, um, head coaching like nods. But I think one of like the plays, a play that I was just like, that's just defensively, like that's just a genius play was um, the, the, uh, the corner blitz with Mike Hilton on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't, I don't know if it's the one where he sacked him, but he, uh, Mike Hilton came in from the left side. Josh Allen didn't even see him. Yes. Yeah. Like that's exactly what Mike Hilton is so good at, which is amazing. And that was just like the perfect play at the perfect time. And it makes a difference. And then you have guys like Trey Hendrickson, Sam Hubbard, just absolute monsters on the edge. And then you have, like when they're not in, Zach Carter, Joseph Osai, like they had solid games. And then you try to run the ball. You got B.J. Hill and D.J. Reader in there who were two very good de- um, run defensive tackles. Mm-hmm. So I think our front, that front four is one of the best in the league. And the secondary is also really good. I mean, Eli Apple – was he was on he was on um stuff on digs for most of the game like you said 40 yards five catches absolutely took him out of the game cam taylor Britt had some huge moments he had that um blocked pass to gabe davis he had an interception late like cam taylor Britt showed out jesse bates had some good plays like the defense is legit and yeah. they're carrying what they were doing this past postseason that's that's carried through this postseason and now you got that defense and i feel like the offense is playing even better than they were if not smarter than they were this past playoff run so i think i think the sky's the limit for this team and we'll see how they do against obviously a juggernaut in kansas city but one thing to note is patrick Mahomes is going to be a little bit limited because of his high ankle sprain but still it's patrick Mm -hmm. Mahomes. Like, that's still something you need to be worried about because 70% Patrick Mahomes yeah. is still a top five quarterback in the NFL. But so I think, like, like you said, like the Niners look beatable and we'll see how the how the Eagles do actually playing a competent team in the playoffs. So I think, like, if the Bengals do end up beating the Chiefs for the fourth time, I think there's a I think they would be um, Super Bowl favorites, in my opinion. Yeah, I think so. A couple of things from what you said. I think that the Bengals defensive line is almost criminally underrated. Like you don't really hear people talking about them too much. And I think I think their defensive line is one of the best all around D lines in the NFL. They get pressure every game. I mean, Trey Hendrickson and Sam Hubbard, those guys are nasty. So I, I think that defensive line is just huge. Because you know that really no matter who they're playing, that the defensive line is probably going to win in the trenches. Like, I don't think this defensive line is going to get handled. I think they're going to they're going to win the battle in the trenches on the on the line. Um and uh yeah, going to the the Chiefs this week. Um yeah, Patrick Mahomes with his high ankle sprain. You know, like you said, limited Patrick Mahomes is still a top five quarterback in the NFL. Um, I think the Chiefs did look vulnerable, though, um, against the Jags. And with Patrick Mahomes, now I realize that he has a week um, with that high ankle sprain. But high ankle sprains are known for being like one of the like the worst type of like ankle sprain. Um, Very lingering. High ankle sprains linger, and they're a lot more severe than just normal ankle sprains. So he's going to be slow. I, I so I think that's going to play into the Bengals' hands for sure. Um, and like I said, with the Chiefs only pulling out a victory against the Jags by seven, um, I I think that the Bengals absolutely can win this game for a fourth time. Um, and. I, I also agree with what you said, that if they do pull out a win for the fourth time against the Chiefs, two things. I think the Bengals are Super Bowl favorites at that point. And secondly, um, you, you, could make, you could make an argument. Now, I'm not saying he is, but I'm saying you could make an argument that Joe Burrow is the best quarterback in the NFL. That could be an argument that's made. Yeah, I'm sure that will be brought up. I still think – I think he's – 
almost solidified himself as the number two, I think. But I yeah. think it's going to be going to be hard for him to pass Pat. Because I mean, Pat it lost be, especially Owens, as early so as still yeah. had a um, MVP caliber season, over five thousand yards, forty plus touchdowns. But yeah. I find him in probably the MVP voting for quarterbacks would be Joe Burrow. So I think, yeah, I think he's and I think especially he's like that game. But yeah, he could hey could be, he could come for number one for sure. Yeah. I don't. I mean, I think I think he is solidified at number two because I don't think he's taking Mahomes off of number one anytime soon, especially with it being this early in his career. But there could be like that argument could be and probably will be made. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I think like I mean, if if Burrow and the Bengals come into Arrowhead and do it again for the fourth time, and they go to the Super Bowl for the second consecutive year. I mean, there's something to be said there about Joe Burrow and this Bengals team. I mean, this is this is already the best Bengals team in the history of the franchise. Because yeah, I, this I think the- this year's Bengals are even better than last year's Bengals because of Joe Burrow's evolution, getting the ball out faster. Um, you know, the offense is playing at a higher level. Um, they're more consistent, that's for sure. So I think this year's Bengals is better than last year's Bengals. Uh, this is the best Bengals team in the history of the franchise right here. I'd agree. I'd also say that this, like, two-year period and on is, like, the best era of Bengals football ever. Cause it definitely look at is. It, I think from, the Bengals, from like, are solidified. Yeah. From 2021 to, 20, to, like, right now, they have five playoff wins, which is more than they had in the last 52 years. So, like, that said yeah. alone says all you need to hear about what Joe Burrow is doing and how – He's already basically become a, like a Cincinnati legend in his what, third oh, yeah. season, third season, third or fourth season. Yeah, if he if they win and they go to the Super Bowl again, like Burrow taking the Bengals to the Super Bowl, like two out of the three years he's been in the NFL, like that that's almost unheard of. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, Tom and, Brady. Yeah, I mean it really is. Uh, I I I will stand by that take that I made long ago in saying Joe Burrow is the closest thing that we have in the NFL today to Tom Brady. And I stand by that. I think that is a 100% accurate take. He is the closest thing we have to Tom Brady in the NFL right now. And, um, I agree. And I mean, yeah, this, this, this is like the golden era of Bengals football right now. They've solidified themselves as, as a, a force to be reckoned with for a, a, a while now. I mean, they they are right up there with the Chiefs um, and um, probably the Bills. Um, those those three teams are right there um, with dynasty uh, juggernaut um, teams in the NFL. And I'm not really sure if there's any in the NFC that immediately come to my head. Um, but those three are really, in my opinion, the three juggernaut teams of the NFL. Now the 49ers are a juggernaut, but I but what I'm saying is like a long like a fran- like this is a yeah. dynasty juggernaut team right here, you know. I agree. Yeah, I think those three teams you're gonna see a lot of them in these next five, ten years. A lot of yeah. I'm, you're gonna see a lot of Allen and Mahomes. You're gonna see a lot of Burrow and Allen and you're gonna see a lot of Mahomes versus Allen. That's gonna be the AFC championship almost every year. At least yeah, that's the sure. expectation. That's what that's the expectation, and so mm-hmm. I think, yeah, like, I I agree. I think for the foreseeable future, I would not be surprised if the AFC wins the Super Bowl every year, whether it's the Bills, the Bengals, the Chiefs, or another team sneaks in and becomes like really great. I think, I think just let's like, not like, sleep like, on uh, let's not sleep on Trevor Lawrence and the Jags too. Yeah, they Jags have out been, year. been on the come up. Um. And then, like, the Chargers are still fairly good. So, like, there's – the AFC is still stacked, obviously. Yeah, I, but, I'm i giving – I'm giving the AFC to, right now, uh, Bengals, Chiefs, Bills. I mean, I, it's got to be the Jags. I would say – I mean, the, the Chargers – the Chargers are a good football three team. And all, and then, like, I think it's those three, and then there's, like, a drop-off, like, significant drop-off. And then you get to, like – Yeah, like, yeah, for sure. Three, like, but like then like those three the, I don't think the Jags are like yeah. Super Bowl, but the other three I believe are Super no. Bowl contenders. 
Yeah, any like the 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 Bengals, the Chiefs, and the Bills, all three are Super Bowl contending teams. All three can win a Super Bowl. Um, but then there is a drop off there, and then you get to the likes of the Jags and the Chargers. Um, but I but I'm just saying I think I think the Jags are another team that they're they're on the up and up. They have their young franchise quarterback in Trevor Lawrence. Uh, I, I think the Jags are gonna be a good team as well. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely those three juggernauts for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, but, I think obviously for the Bengals, like in this next couple of years, there's going to be some obviously cap questions because Burrow's extension eligible. I saw something he's going to get roughly around 50 mil a year, which is 100% deserved. Could even get the biggest contract in NFL history, which is also probably deserved, to put just looking at his production and where we're at right now. Um, but am I like I think if you have Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, you have a fighting chance in almost any game you play. Yeah, for just sure. Just because those two are just so electric, so in sync, and I think, like obviously, since Jamar's been here, he's just electrified Joe Burrow, and I feel like there's not a game where Jamar doesn't do something spectacular or like doesn't have some sort of like crazy highlight, and then obviously Joe yeah. Burrow is Joe Burrow. So I feel like if you have those two. Sky's the limit for your franchise, and luckily for us, that's on our yep. team. Yeah, <laughs> as long as long as you keep those two around, they're gonna they're gonna be good. But yeah, they're they're gonna run into some cap issues because they have all these superstars that are young and on rookie deals. Um, so th- they are going to run into that, yes. But I think, like you said, as long as you have Burrow and Chase, I uh, I think you're sitting sitting pretty 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 there. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's encouraging yeah, so I, to hear what like burrow and chase have been saying recently like burrow was like i want to be in cincinnati for my whole career and i want zach taylor to be there with me and then jamar's like wherever burrow goes i'm going so like that i feel like that's an encouraging that like we're we're building a culture listen the Bengals are building a culture where people want to play like that didn't used to be the case but now players who are there like want to be there and I feel like that's just a credit to the entire coaching staff, the front office, and then obviously like Joe Burrow. I think he's changed the culture in Cincinnati, and I think people want to play there and people want to continue playing there. And I really yeah, hope definitely. that Jamar yeah. and, and Joe are Bengals for life because that would be awesome. Yeah, I agree for sure. That I think Joe Burrow and Zach Taylor have overhauled the culture in Cincinnati because it it was a losing culture there. People, no one wanted to go play in Cincinnati. There was nothing good in Cincinnati. All of a mm-hmm. sudden, Joe Burrow comes and everything changes. <laughs> so I think, yeah. I mean, Zach Taylor and Joe Burrow have overhauled this franchise and they have created a juggernaut and a team that's going to compete for a lot of Super Bowls. So it's 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 pretty cool to see them go from the joke of the NFL to to a juggernaut within a couple of years. So you, you don't really see that too often. I know I know you saw um, you saw Kurt Warner's uh, greatest show on turf, ninety nine Rams, uh, the year before that um, they were three and thirteen, and then the next year Kurt Warner comes in and they win the Super Bowl. Um, but I think I think the Bengals are building something really special and and potentially very long term in Cincinnati. Um so it's it's really cool to see that. And I think I think uh Zach Taylor is the guy. I know there's been criticism with him uh from a head coaching standpoint, but I think he is the guy. Um mm-hmm. he has if they if they win Sunday, he has taken them to two straight Super Bowls. And the last time the bang actually the Bengals have never been to two consecutive Super Bowls. They went to two in the 1980s, that's two in a decade. They're going to two in a row if they win Sunday. That is unheard of in Cincinnati. So yeah, I, heard of I think they, they have just changed the culture. They've got the right people in there. It's really fun to watch. They got a good football, very good football team. Yeah, I agree. And like you said, um, Zach Taylor's had his criticisms. Like I've criticized, like earlier in the season when we started off zero and two, I questioned whether he should still be coaching or not. And obviously, he's done a 
he's done a heck of a job the last latter half of the, the last basically half of the season he's rallied this team together from a team that was owing to and people were writing them off saying super bowl hangover to a team that right now is playing like you said to go to back-to-back super bowls is not something that you can take lightly that's something no. that's um that coach taylor has done a great job with is rallying the guys and and like instilling that confidence in them that even though they started off poorly they fixed they figured it out and they are like you said they're they're playing better now than they were last year like i like i i agree with you i think this team is better than the team last year was and so i think burrow is playing better like all, all that stuff <clears throat> And I'm excited for uh, Sunday. I think it's going to be a heck of a game. I really hope that um, we get some positive news about maybe Jonah Williams or Alex Kappa. Like if maybe they can play. But yeah, if the O line plays how they did this last week, I think we have a shot. I think we have a good shot because the Chiefs don't have a little crazy pass rush or run defense. I mean, Chris, Chris Jones, Jones is nasty. But other than that, or George Karloff, this too. Yeah, but also one thing, uh, kind of during the game, it was mentioned that um, Ted Karras was kind of gingerly walking, so I haven't heard any updates on that, but I'm not, I'm assuming he'll play. So hopefully, like, whatever that was isn't too bad. And then it would be amazing news if we can get maybe one of those two guys who have been out to come back. I feel like that would be a big, a big help for the team. Yeah, I agree for sure. If they can get um, – I'm I'm hoping to hear some news. Um, well, you know, hopefully tomorrow because it's it, it's Wednesday tomorrow, so we're getting pretty close. Um, so hoping to hear some good news on Williams and Kappa. Uh, both would be just amazing. But I mean, even just one of them would be huge. Um, hoping to get some good news on them. But I mean, honestly, either way, if the offensive line plays how they did against the Bills, they have a really good chance. And I think mm-hmm. I think it's I think it's going to be a heck of a game. Um, it's, it's going to be a, it's going to be a great showdown. And I think, I, I think, um, uh, my mind has been changed from, um, when we did our playoff predictions, I, I had the Bengals and the chiefs in the AFC championship. Well, I'm, I'm going to go back and I take that back. And I, I think the Bengals are going to win this game. I think the Bengals are going to go to another Super Bowl. Um, cause I think based on what, I'm not saying anything. You stand with the Chiefs. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got to keep the, I got to keep yep. the bang and get the Bengals. So I'm, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, I just, no, like, just no. From, from, from what I saw in my um, heart, I agree, but I'm not gonna. Yeah, yeah, speak. yeah. <laughs> from what I saw out of both of these teams in the divisional round, I think that honestly, I think it's more so. Like, convince me why the Chiefs can win. Like, how are the Chiefs going to win this game? Not, oh, the Bengals, you know, we, we got to fight for this. How are the Bengals going to win this game? It's the Chiefs. Oh, it's the big bad Chiefs. I think it's almost the other way now. I think it's like, okay, how are the Chiefs going to beat the Bengals? I mean, with with Joe Burrow, 3-0 and against Mahomes, they have beat – they've beaten them – Two times last year, one time this year already, pending a fourth straight win. Um, I think that the Chiefs are going to have to show me how they can beat the Bengals now. I don't think it's the other way around, which is really something because um, I don't think there's any other team in the NFL that can say that about the Chiefs. I had to agree with that. I think it's going to be a great game, though. I think it's going to really come down to the wire. All three – of the Bengals chiefs games have been decided by three points, all three of them. Um, So I think there's no reason to assume that the fourth one's going to be different. I think it's going to be close game like that, but I, I I do think the, um, I do think that the uh, Bengals are going to win this game. Yeah. I think it's going to be a heck of a game. It's going to be probably the best game of the, of the day. I don't know how oh, for sure. the Niners, but it's prime time on the mm-hmm. lights in Arrowhead. Do you think it should have been um at a neutral site or 
I think it should have been, but I don't think it really matters. I mean, I know the Bengals don't give a crap where they play, um, but I, mean, no. I, I think it should have been, yes, but I don't think it really matters all that much, honestly. I mean, I think I think those guys are perfectly happy to go play at Arrowhead. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So what were your thoughts on um, the, uh, the NFL, like having like pre-sale for like the AFC Championship being like the, the Chiefs and the Bills? <laughs> Well, I think a lot of people got screwed over there. Um, I think that was I think that was really stupid on the NFL's part because honestly, both of those teams almost like one of them did lose and the Chiefs almost lost. The Chiefs very well could have lost to the Jags. Very well could have happened. So, so I think that was really dumb on the NFL's um, standpoint there, and it really just kind of scummy. I mean, honestly, if you really think about it, it's just kind of scummy. Like, I mean, they're like by doing that, they are telling the Jags that you stand no shot. Like, that's just really scummy on the NFL's part. And it also really sucks for the fans because they sold over 50,000 tickets and this game is not even happening now. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, I, I think the NFL absolutely deserves what they got there. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Anything else on the Bengals before we wrap it up? I don't think so. I just make sure you turn on your TV at six thirty. That's gonna be a good game. <laughs> yes, sir. We're hoping for a win. Um. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm excited. I will be glued to my TV for sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's all. Um. That's all we got for today. If you enjoyed, um, make sure to like this video. And yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Good day.